Revelation chapter 6, please. And then here are the passages we're going to look up in. There are three. Revelation 6, 1 Thessalonians 5, and Ezekiel 39. Now, I'm going to tell you some really interesting stuff. So, everyone's talking about this big event. And they thought that this event might happen soon, or now, or years ago. World War Three. So the thing is this, is that will we experience a World War Three? Are we going to experience something big like this one day? So the thing is this, is that it is very, very possible. So it is very, very possible World, world War Three can happen. Now I can tell you this, I promise you, that there will be wars among nations at the beginning stage of the tribulation. So because it will happen at the beginning stage of the tribulation wars, that's why it's possible that near the end of the church age, which is today, we might experience some of these wars building up to that. Now you might say, why do you say that, Pastor? Because of Revelation chapter 6, and we'll look at verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given him, uh, to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So notice right here that the second seal of Revelation is a red horse, which is war. So nations will war against each other, the Bible says. And this happens at the second seal, so at the beginning stages of the tribulation. Now look at, uh, I mentioned Revelation 6. We're going to look at these two verses later. We're going to also look at Daniel 11 here. Daniel 11 is very clear, actually. Daniel 11. Now, I'm not going to mention this passage, but while you're turning to Daniel 11... In Revelation 13, in the middle of the tribulation, that's when you find out, so let's say that this is a tribulation, and it lasts for seven years, or however long you want it to be. The thing is, is that it's in the midst that the Antichrist is going to take over the whole world. So the whole world will be in unison. At the middle to latter tribulation. But at the beginning stages, there is fighting and conflict in between. <clears throat> so there's going to be fighting and conflict in between. Alright, so we're going to look at the book of Daniel chapter 11. Now look at this. We've looked at these verses many, many, many times. We looked at these verses many, many times. I know... Daniel chapter 11, and look at what the Antichrist does. So remember, we looked at this chapter many times, so I'm not going to expound it. The king of the north is the Antichrist, but look what the king of the north does. We're going to look at verse 22. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. There are your elites, the small minority, right? The one percentage of the population that owns 99% of the wealth, etc. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. So he enters peaceably. But look at this, verse 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. So notice that the Antichrist, he's having difficulty conquering these nations. So whoever, whoever these random nations are, they have the dominance to conquer him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return, and his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed he shall return, and come toward the south, but it shall not be as a former or as the latter. 
And then if you keep reading down, 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 notice that the Antichrist, he sets up his abomination of desolation and, you know, the 666, profane the holy place, etc. But before all these things happen, you notice that there's this time frame, which is why we believe that, you know, that there has to be a beginning stage of the tribulation. There's all this action going on. Uh, to say only three and a half just seems too limited to me. So in the beginning stages, the Antichrist is conflicting. He's known as the North, but he's versing different nations. The Bible calls it King of the South. Now the thing is this, is that who are these nations, right? It's very possible that these nations, which would make a lot of sense in the other passages, these will refer to the famous Gog and Magog. So it would be the communist and Muslim nations. That would make sense. Now, you got to understand this. For years, Bible prophecy scholars have mentioned that the red horse or these nations that the that random nations that come out or Gog and Magog would refer to Russia or it would refer to different Muslim nations such as Turkey or Iraq, uh, China involved, etc. Now, if you look at in the Bible, the Bible says that Gog and Magog, that they're going to rebel against Jerusalem, right? It's so strange when you study the Bible, it mentions about Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog. It's either Russia or some kind of communist countries as one, and the other one as Muslim nations. So Syria, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, etc. These two nations, God seemed to mention quite occasionally at the end times that God has to destroy and judge. Now, it would make sense that these would be the rogue and random nations that the Antichrist is having difficulty. You might say, why would that make a lot of sense? Because the Antichrist, he's not part of these nations. Current events, even years ago, weren't these particular nations always the ones that the United Nations was concerned about? Now, is the Antichrist, do you think, with these rogue nations, or he's with the United Nations? He's United Nations, right? Antichrist is going to be part of the United Nations. He's part of the One World Order, New World Government, etc. He's going to be on this side where a lot of the EU and a lot of the elites and etc. are this, United Nations. So these seem to be the rogue nations that the Antichrist is having difficulty with. I mean, America and the United Nations are still struggling with these countries. Uh, Vladimir Putin, a lot of tension going on. I mean, you got to realize this too, is that it's not just uh, United Nations or certain elites that put psyops or misinformation in our schools and the internet. It's also these communist and Muslim nations, too. And they're all over the Internet, too. So it's funny that United Nations acclu uh, accuses these guys for shy up on the Internet and false information in schools. And these guys are the one who accuse United Nations for the shy up in the Internet for false information in schools. That's why you can't trust any information, especially online. You don't know what you're getting fed, folks. Okay, so these uh, United Nations, they're accusing the Russian Simon terrorists to be the ones to putting false information against Clinton and, you know, the conspiracy theories, etc. But you can't trust what they say either, because what they teach on the Internet and schools is also a lot of false information, too. That's why concerning this stuff, you got to be careful, see? And that's why you notice I'm always say the Bible has to be the authority. It has to be the Bible as the final authority and standard. And whatever information comes out, hey, we just know this. We just know whatever information's out there, it's going to line up with the Bible eventually, because the Bible predicted it. So all this stuff is happening. So these two conflicting sides will produce a World War III. Three. Daniel 11 says what? Daniel 11 says the Antichrist comes in through peace, right? Now we see that these peace talks are coming with North Korea eventually. 
that they're trying to do something with them. We're also seeing that uh, Syria and Israel, they're getting conflict, so they're going to want peace eventually. And I know uh, Vladimir Putin can't last forever like that, and he had close, originally back then, he was pretty close friends with Trump, so we don't know if that would be still a go, they can get peace. Jared Kushner is a Jew, and I do know Israel said that if there's a guy, uh, or Trump, actually said that if there's someone who can make a peace with Israel, it would be what? Jared Kushner. I do know Mohammed bin Salman. He's the guy that's, uh, in, I made a video that there are some interesting signs about him that matches with the Antichrist, and he's trying to get some peace going with Israel and the Muslim nations. So you see all this? Uh, this is crazy stuff. A lot, eventually, you do know this, eventually it's going to be peace and war. <clears throat> it's not going to last like this forever. Eventually, there's going to be war and peace. The Antichrist is going to set up a covenant and peace, but there's going to be war. 1 Thessalonians 5, we don't have time to turn there. 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, when they shout out peace, and this is referring to the tribulation end times, the Bible says what? Watch out, it's going to be war and destruction. Revelation 6 says the second seal, war is going to break out. Ezekiel 39, that's the interesting one that a lot of Bible scholars turn to. So go to Ezekiel 39, and we'll close it here. Now, Ezekiel 39, I showed you this. Ezekiel 38 is the millennium, and Ezekiel 39 is the tribulation. A lot of people just want to keep putting this as a church age, near the end of the church age. But I showed you how that cannot be true. However, however, now listen to me now, however, I am open, I am open to the possibility that Ezekiel 39, some form of it can be fulfilled at the beginning stage of the tribulation here. Now you might say, why? It's very possible because of, look at Ezekiel 39, which I showed you. Now this is Gog and Magog, see? And remember, those are the rogue nations that Israel and the Antichrist is going to have trouble with. Now remember, Israel's part of the United Nations. The Antichrist is a Jew, so and he's going to set up the covenant with Israel at the beginning stage of the tribulation. So there's no doubt Antichrist is going to go on their side. Now look at this. Look at Ezekiel 39. In this tribulation time period that I told you that's in, there's something interesting here. At verse 8. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire, and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears. So Israel is burning the weapons of who? The Gog and Magog, at verse 1. Therefore thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and leave, but the sixth part of thee, etc., uh, etc. Et and then verse 6, And I will send a fire on Magog. So there's Magog. So these communist and Muslim nations, Gog and Magog, it really looks like this is, these are the nations the Antichrist is going to be struggling with. Because especially, keep reading Ezekiel 39, I did not finish that verse. They finish a war, right? But in this war, how long? They burn the weapons, they shall burn them with fire, how long? Interesting. Seven years. How long is the, tri the tribulation according to traditional teaching? Seven years. Isn't that interesting? So it is very possible that it could be starting right before, once it starts, there's a war right here, see World War III, right over here, and then starts the clock of seven years through the tribulation. Or it could be somewhere around here, uh, either right before the beginning of the tribulation, or right after we're raptured, and then starting the clock of seven years. So it's very possible. I am open to that as well. However, the traditional understanding that I believe in is that this is really tribulation passage. Because if you look at the whole chapter, I'm not going to expound it again, but if you read the whole chapter, it's like God is siding with Israel. He conquers them, and then he sets up his kingdom. So that sounds like it's the tribulation's all done, etc. It's possible that this burning up of the seven years, it could happen right after Armageddon. See, after the tribulation, they just burned them for seven years. It's possible. But 
it seems, but this passage, I know a lot of people use this passage as a strong indicator that it, it's not like at the end. It could be like at the beginning over there, see? But I showed you the other argument side as well, so either or, it doesn't matter. We're not really sure. But more leaning toward tribulation context, because there's so many verses that seems to show that. But I'm open to the possibility here. The point is, the point is, folks, is that there will be a World War III. I know that for a fact. There will be a World War III. I just don't know exactly when, but it's going to happen. Peace and war. It's happening soon. Everything is in play. Everything. Israel, the communist countries, Trump coming in. I mean, uh, you got Muslim nations all up. United Nations riled up about this. Both sides, uh, the Antichrist side, United Nations, and rogue nations, which consist of communists and Muslims, attacking each other, accusing each other. You can't trust anything even online nowadays because you don't know which side is giving the PSYOP and misinformation. I mean... Now, one thing I learned, everything's a conspiracy, okay? So there's not, so you can't trust YouTube, you can't trust what you learn in schools. You can only trust this book. And look, if you stuck to this book, all of this stuff, you would have seen it a long time ago. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And we'll see, uh, keep your eyes open on current events, on peace talks, and talks of wars.